What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is Theory is Dead, and the song we're looking at is Deal. So let's go. Awesome. Theory is dead. Deal. What an incredible song deal, right? In my opinion, one of the harder songs in the Grateful Dead Garcia catalog, right? Both theory-wise, chord progression-wise, and solo-wise. This song really had me going for a couple days here, how to create a solo that was up to par and that outlined the changes and sort of had a bit of movement to it as well. But we'll get there. So for today's video, obviously theory is dead deal. We'll look at the chord progression, some of the theory behind the chord progression, like where these chords come from. For example, the C sharp seven, right? And then we'll look at some nice solo techniques that can hopefully help you in writing your own solo and when practicing, giving you the confidence to have different solos every time you play the song. So with all that being said, let's dive into the chord progression right now. Cool. So before we take a more theoretical look at this chord progression, let's take a quick lap around it first. <laughs> Right. What an incredible progression. Really, really cool and some really cool chords happening in that progression. So we can say this is very much an A major, A mixolydian type progression. More mixolydian in the turnaround where it goes from A to G. Right, because if you watched my mixed lidding video from last week, you'd know that that one flat seven four progression is very mixed lidian. 
in this case, one being A, flat seven being G, four being D, back to one. So we'll get there. But for the rest of the chord progression from the verse, it's very, very A major. Right, we have our one chord, two, three dominant seven, right? In the key of A, this C sharp should be C sharp minor, but it's C sharp dominant seven. We'd call that a secondary dominant, right? If you were to write it, you would say maybe uh, five, seven of six. So we're borrowing that chord, that C sharp seven from the F sharp scale. Let's not get too in depth on secondary dominance. <laughs> so we have A to five of six to six minor, F sharp minor, our five chord E major, four major, sharp four diminished, back to A, to now six major, right, another secondary dominant we could say, to B major, to D major as our turnaround. And I'm adding some walking bass line to that, right? So for that A to C sharp seven, I'm doing. Open A string, G sharp, B, C, C sharp. So that's C sharp dominant seven. Walking back down, G sharp, G, F sharp. Hitting the roots. Again, walking down. Right, G sharp, G, F sharp major, B, D. progression especially my favorite part that e d sharp four diminished back through really really cool progression so it has that through all the verses verse one verse two verse three Right, and in the jam section towards the end is just the don't you let that. Right.
right. Such an incredible court progression. Really, really cool with that secondary dominance in there. A really ingenious piece by Garcia. So now let's take a look at some soloing ideas and how we can approach this solo, which is, in my opinion, one of the more hardest in the Grateful Dead catalog. So let's go. So before we look at ways how to approach the solo, let's first do a lap around the chord progression around this area of the fingerboard as our roadmap, right? We have our A major, C sharp seven, F sharp minor, E, D, sharp four diminished, back to our root, F sharp major, our B, D, repeat. Right, that's our roadmap. So now that we have our roadmap, let's check out a very simple solo using chord tones, right? Root, third, fifth, something like this. So that solo is our skeleton, right? Everything else we add around it is just, how do you say it? Adding more to the story, right? Right, A to C sharp seven, I am landing there again on the fifth degree of C sharp, that G sharp. From the F sharp minor, E, D, and then sharp four diminished, I am strictly thinking A major, right? Right, now we're back to the A to this F sharp major, right? And from there, I am descending chromatically a, G sharp, G, F sharp, landing on the root of this F sharp. Then I spell out a B major triad, right? Bending to the third, root of D. Back to it again, A to C sharp seven. This time I'm doing a cool lick that spells out that C sharp and then lands on the flat seven degree, right? So from the B, it goes. Right? I am doing B, A, G sharp, arpeggio descending that C sharp, G sharp, E sharp, C sharp, and then coming down chromatically to that B natural, which is the flat seven degree of that C sharp seven. So we take it from the A to F sharp, B, D, Right? That is something very, very mayor, right? Where he'll descend and land on the flat seven degree. Right? 
then I'll do focus again on A major for the F sharp minor to the E. Then I'll spell out the D. Spell out the sharp four diminished, and then I do. And then hit those triads, right? So from the top, that solo looks something like this. Something like that. Again, let's do it slower. And that is really how you should approach this solo when composing your own, right? And when practicing to improvise. Because having a skeleton like that, like we did at the very beginning, allows you the ability to always add more notes. Like we say pretty often on the channel, it's easier to add notes than it is to take away notes, right? Less is more sometimes. It's better to play less notes that outline the changes than play a ton of notes that you can't really tell where you are in the progression, right? So you can take the same knowledge and just bring it up the fretboard like we did in the intro solo. Right? Where again, I'm literally spelling, sorry, I'm going up the A major scale And then I'm approaching that C sharp seven again by descending to that G sharp, right? Same ideas, just different part of the fretboard, which result in different solos, right? So these are the tools that when practicing, always start with less notes and then build up, right? So you have a story and you have a skeleton, right? A rough draft of what you want to say it, and you have the ability to move those same techniques around the fretboard. So, yeah. <laughs> well, all right, guys, that is today's video. Theory is dead deal. If you enjoyed today's video, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.